Bishop g6. What should we do? Moves in the center. Is this pawn loose? It looks like I could take it. If you count up, one, two, three. One, two, but. What? <laughs> Where did that move come from? Hello? I didn't even touch the damn queen. Hey, give me that thing back. That's not the ha that's not a habit. Well, um, we're gonna take a pawn in the center, of course. Okay, and uh, all right, nice little tactic for the boys. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, good habits. What can I say? And we won the game. So actually, that queen takes f6 was the quickest way to win the game. Write that down. Yeah, get your goddamn notebooks out, write that down. Why don't you? Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO, all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow. What you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. Okay. E4, E5, knight F3. Yeah, we've already seen this. Okay, knight C6. Now, we're, we're not going to be too... Uh, Stas, thanks for the five gifted subs. We're not going to be too cryptic here. You guys know the drill. Okay, we've seen this setup before. On there, let's castle. Okay, and what if we said, guys, about D4? Um, you know, generally after this, or maybe after this in castle, if it's possible to play D4 instead of D3, and it's well defended enough, which it is, then we're going to do it. Then we're going to do it. Okay, let's take this. Let's take this. Hey, good night, Tubbs. Okay, we'll take this as well. This is going to be on YouTube. Yep. Okay, he takes, and I think this is where we finish our development, either here or here. Let's experiment with a little more bishop g5 in our life. That's a little bit of a pin, you know, in general. This bishop is going to make it a little bit harder for the knight to move. After h6, are we taking this knight? Are we following the rule of capturing pieces? Wow, that's a big answer. Correct. Correct. Bishop h4, potent. You got it. You got it. Bishop h4. We're going to drop that bishop back. And it keeps the exact same pressure. Now, if he wants to play g5 to get rid of that pressure, be my guest. Why is this fine? Well, I'm still going to go back. Now I'm threatening his pawn. And look at these guys. This is a big, big weakness in front of his king. So we bring the bishop back. And we don't mind bringing the bishop back more. So we're threatening the pawn. We'll see if he defends it. Is it, it is a center pawn. He does not defend it. He goes knight to d4. Now, are we going to take this knight and follow the capture rule? Or are we going to take that pawn? We're going to take the knight. And where are we going to put the knight? We're going to put it in the center. And, and this hasn't changed. If you ever need to move your knight, um, the center of the board is, is where it's at. You're always going to look, is this square or this square available? And that's where you're going to go first. <laughs> oh, you should take the pawn, potent. You should take the pawn. But which one are we going to do? For which rule to follow, we're going to take the piece. Because we're going to stick with the same idea of basically trading pieces. Um, and the only exceptions to that are pretty much going to be, um, you know, the bishop for knight that we talked about already. So you're obviously right that we want to take the pawn. Of course we do. But hey, I took the knight. I brought my knight to the middle of the board. I followed my rules. And now I get a free piece. Don't tell me that I uh, didn't teach you nothing, boys. That's a hangy bishop. We'll, we're going to take that. And when the king moves, we're going to take his other bishop, of course. We're going to take his other bishop. Knight for bishop trade, I'll take all day. Okay, and let's bring the rooks to the middle. Okay, he's attacking our pawn here, actually. Um, don't think it's crazy to defend it, but um, even though maybe I think f3 is a better move, e5 feels a little bit more in line with what we've been doing. Always push the pawns in the center. 
And uh, oh, look at that. That's another free piece, guys. Oh, and after F5, this is a great, great opportunity for me to remind you if you guys have the rules open, if you guys have the rules open, we finally get to know what all oh, pass on is. Wow, look at us. I think when you're, when you're past level one, it's time to actually uh, learn and look up what the heck is on pass on. It doesn't mean you're going to always do it, but if you're on pass on, yeah, exactly. I know, guys. I know. Calm down. If you're all past sawing this pawn, you're taking it, and it just disappears off the board. I'm moving my pawn here, and it, it just yeet. Later. A big move. I know. A big move. Takes. We're going to finish uh, development, get our rook to the middle. And what's our next move going to be? It's still going to be h3. We haven't forgot about our very, very basic, basic moves. Okay, it goes there. Basic move, h3. Okay, b5. Uh, bishop move. Either here or here would be fine. Just want to control the center. Want to control the center. And now that we're in an end game, I'm going to be thinking about a couple things. Bringing my pieces to the middle. Looking for trades, for sure. Um, so king, king to the middle. Looking for trades. Okay. Bring the king up. Get the king involved. That's right. Try not to be too fancy in the end games. He goes here. Let's take it. All right, let's try to use our rook. Remember, you want to use your pieces to attack your opponent's pawns, and you want to bring your king to the middle of the board. That's, that's pretty much all, all we know we want to do for sure. Ooh, okay, well, it is a fork, but it's also free. It's also free. It's all free. Tick, 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 tick. H5. Check. <laughs> you know, I thought about it, Potent, but I'm pretty sure I'm good, you know. Black's Rook, by the way, hasn't moved in a long, long time. He's just been moving pawns. Now, the fact that he's down two bishops here doesn't help, but I feel like if those bishops weren't there, he'd be playing the same moves. Uh, yeah, let's use our pieces and attack pawns. That's, that's the main plan. It looks like I'm playing like a genius right now, but it's just a lot easier to play with these two extra bishops. It, it just, he doesn't, he doesn't have the luxury. He doesn't have the luxury. Um, I would check him here, but of course, when I see this, now that I can do tactics, I'm going to play this move. Because why? Because it looks cool. <laughs> because it looks cool. It's not even doing anything, but hey, you know, I just learned this thing. <laughs> I, I want to use it. This is important. Let's put the bishop in the center. Yeah, the tactics are coming here, Tommy, you know? Okay, that's a pawn to take. We, we, still, we still take these all the time. Oh! <laughs> hey, I get to use my other tactic. Yep, I got to do a dark square uh, discover check and a light square discover check. There we go. There we go. Let's take that. That's a tactic. But one, of the, one of the simplest. Basically, if you have the rook lined up to the king and something's in the way, you can put that something pretty much wherever you want. Okay, so I always say push a pass pawn. It's generally the, uh, the safest way to convert an advantage. Once you get a queen, use the queen and the rook to do some kind of ladder. Check. Check. Oh, my damn pieces are in the way. Damn it. It's a little awkward. Oh. Oh, you can't even go there. Look at that. Genius. Well, let's get a pre-move under 10 seconds. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. Oh, no, you don't have to pre-move under 10 seconds, guys. It's just that you can. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You don't pre-move every move under 10 seconds. He's going <laughs> to... You guys are going <laughs> to... 
turn into maniacs. <laughs> you can pre-move under 10 seconds. You've unlocked the ability to do so. Um, let's go for E4. Uh, E5, we know that we want to do this. Knight C6, let's go Knight C3. Um, okay, let's castle. And we want to continue D3. Probably this bishop out to G5, depends if he lets me. He goes like that as well. Let's copy him. Okay, going to develop our bishop a little bit more aggressively than last time. Uh, usually we've been putting our bishop there. Okay, it goes a6. Let's bring the rook to the middle. Um, again, knight d5 is something that we're eventually going to get good at playing in positions like this. But um, for now, I'm going to leave it out. And after the game, we're going to look at why knight d5 is so strong. And that'll be a very permanent idea that we're going to try to do. But actually, because he's played b4, we get to look at it right now. Ain't this guy nice? <laughs> this guy's so nice. I'm going to have to move my knight. I can't go to that central square. Would you look at that? I have to go here. Okay, he goes bishop e6. Now, we are going to look to make a capture here. The reason why this is so uh, nice is because his pawns are going to end up like that. Okay, so we still don't want to go bishop for knight for no reason. Okay, so he takes back. Our bishop's being attacked. we got to move our bishop. This is what always happens. When the pawn moves out of the way, we have access to a very special square that we don't usually have access to. There's no pawn on g7, bishop on h6, no pawn on g7. Let's just pick up the queen in our head and imagine we could put it here and put it there. It would be checkmate. It would be checkmate. Now, you guys may remember the last guy who played queen g4 was one of our friends, one of our colleagues. Do you guys remember the game where the guy played queen g4 and I played knight takes g4 and then he played rook e2 and resigned the game without me moving a single extra piece? That's right. It was super embarrassing. So we don't want to be that guy. We want to be better than that guy. Which means when we play queen g4, we're not going to hang our queen. That's right. Yes. So let's try to play queen g4 without hanging our queen. First of all, we're going to start by taking this bishop. Why? Because we're still going to follow the rules here. That's a trade of bishops. We're going to play bishop takes. He took like that. And how do we get here as fast as possible? How do we get here as fast as possible? I should say, how do we get to the g-file as fast as possible? But based on where our queen is, I think queen g4 is, is where we want to get to. Oh. We see a lot of people suggesting knight takes e5. That's a great suggestion. After knight takes e5, queen g4, you would be exactly like our friend from earlier. That's right. You'd be hanging your queen. Perfect. You guys would all lose your queen. <laughs> the goal was to not lose our queen. Uh, not. Do not lose the queen on g4. You guys found the only way to lose the queen on g4. Very impressive. Very impressive. Knight h4, knight d2, I like all these moves. I like all these moves. These are all good because I'm going to be threatening to go there. Now, knight d4 has been suggested by the elite members of the chat. Knight d4 does the exact same thing as knight d5. It's a discovered attack. Now, is this advanced? Yes. There's a reason I want to show it to you, because once you get double pawns, you should be looking at the quickest way to get your queen out here every single time, because you will checkmate your opponents very quickly. Very quickly. Knight d4, he took it, of course, because he thinks we're an idiot. But we're not an idiot. We're geniuses. All of us. We did this together. I'm not a genius. You guys are the geniuses. Look at that position. Look at that checkmate. You did that. Give yourself a pat on the back. If you're watching this stream right now, those plus nine points, those are your points. Give yourself a pat on the back because you earned them. So if you can ever pin this guy's knight and then put your knight into d5 to also attack it, your next move is you're going to take it. He's going to have to take like that. None of these pieces can get back and, and defend to help. And after he takes back, you put your bishop here. And believe me, there's going to be a lot of checkmates for you. 
Let's go e4, e5. Okay, he goes there. We're going to match that with this knight. And we haven't seen this opening before, really. Um, but we know we're going to take it, that's for sure. Okay, take take everything. Take, 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 take. Um, we got to get developed here. Let's bring the knight. Okay, bishop is out. And I can't really bring this bishop out in a, in a good way. Like, he's covering all my squares, so I... Feels like I kind of have to do this. Like, okay, he's pinning me. We've been always playing this move. Now, I agree bishop e7 would maybe be a nicer move, but we're going to stick to what we've been doing. Okay, castles. Um, let's get our pieces developed here. Okay, knight out. Um, again, let's get this bishop out. Where can we move it to? Of all these squares. I mean, this is just not very not doing that much. Bishop here is definitely not doing anything because uh, there's no knight there. There's nothing to, you know what I mean? Nothing to attack. I'll just get attacked like this and I'll have to move. So I think we're going to choose to go here. Takes. We're going to capture and our pawns don't look that bad here. Castling. Well, we've always kingside castled, but if I looked at the material, I could almost say it's an endgame and move my king up, but I don't think we're quite there yet. One of the rules I said for um, bringing the king into the middle is less than 12 points. And rook, rook, and bishop is technically still 13, so. Uh, he's attacking my pawn here. Let's defend it. Why am I using this rook? It looks clumsy, but uh, if I use the other rook, he can take this pawn. F4. Okay, well, let's kick his knight out. That's you know, very, very important. Very important. Knight there, he's attacking my pawn. Knight there, he's attacking my pawn. Okay, well, I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it. Let's take towards the center. Knight e6. He goes there anyway. Um, and I think it's a very strong move because uh, basically he's attacking my pawn. My rook's guarding it. And if I move my rook, then he takes it. So my rook is stuck where it is. Can't move it. But I'd love to move it. I really would. My king cannot approach the knight because it's being cut off by his rook. So what do I do about this guy? How can I... Does anyone have a suggestion for how I might make a few moves in this position? How do I untangle myself? Any ideas? I think my opponent's got a uh, strong game so far. Push. Oh, we got multiple suggestions for resign. Thank you, Dylan. We have multiple suggestions for resigning. Um, C5. So C5 is going to be, uh, let's just say, less good than this. Why is, it, why is C5 going to be less good than C6? Well, C5 is going to create a special pawn here called a backwards pawn. And C6, his buddy's still there. You know, yeah, I mean, they're still hanging out. They still talk. C5 is, I mean, this guy's just left behind. Permanently. Permanently. We're going to go C6, but I agree with you guys. I agree with you guys. I like your idea. Move the C pawn. Because now my rook doesn't have to touch. Okay, so let's say you guys are right. Let's say you guys are right. So now we move the c-pawn. What was your plan after this? Now the knight's not attacking the pawn. What, what am I supposed to do? What moves do I have? You guys said move the pawn. Okay, I move the pawn. Now what? Attack the trap knight. I don't disagree. What you guys are going to realize, though, is... Rook e8 to try to attack the knight, runs into knight c7. It doesn't matter if I have a pawn there or not. He's going to be forking me. He's going to be forking me. And I can't move my rook here or here because the knight's covering. So I can't move my rook here, here, or here. You see how annoying this position is? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. You guys are saying b5? Sure, I can move b5. <laughs> sure. I'll play b5. <laughs> What's the next move there, geniuses? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to move my king over. <laughs> it's a tough position. My bishop's hanging now. My goodness, this guy doesn't stop. i got to defend my stupid bishop now? Oh my goodness. You feel like you're being mocked? <laughs> oh, quite the opposite. I'm giving a lot of credit to my opponent here, 
who is playing a killer game. Killer game. Let's defend my bishop. Super impressive. Super impressive. Now, were you guys suggesting bad moves? No. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, even though you were suggesting good moves, you notice that we still didn't have anything we could do about that. So what move did it have to do with the most? I would say e5. e5 is probably the, the, the nasty move because he, he gets that square. Um, how could we improve that in general? Well, I mean, I think, I think this is a very fine position for us. No, no worries here. Um, castle and queenside is fine, but I would say in general, you know, even though there's 13 points here, it is pretty much an end game. So I would be looking to play one of these, one of these king moves. All right, e4, e5. Knight there and attacking those two central squares. What do we do? Knight c6 to match that. Of course, this is what we've been doing the whole stream. c3, we haven't seen this move yet, actually. This is sort of a new one. Um, let's just proceed as normal for the moment. He goes d4. We're going to take it because, yeah, always go for trades. Always go for trades. He takes back. Now, I mean, I'm looking at that pawn. It's looking a little tasty. It's hard for me to say no right now, guys. That is a free pawn in the center. Hey, if I get crushed here, I get crushed. I get crushed, I get crushed. But that is, that is what I would play. Okay, d5. Now, I have to move my knight. Where do we move this knight? I want to move it to the center, but I cannot. Those squares are not available. Anything away from the center is maybe playable, but I would always go central first. So if I can't go here or here, I would choose this square. It's the next most central thing. It does attack a central square. These are the central squares I'm talking about. Okay, so we go here. He goes knight into e5. Now, I need to develop my bishops. I haven't developed them at all. So I feel like d6 is the natural move, hitting that knight, and also letting my pieces breathe. So I'm going to go d6. Bishop b5. Again, my uh, king is in check. Um, I need to somehow, somehow defend against this. Bishop there seems to walk into bishop takes. So we kind of have to play c6, right? There's just no way I can do that move. So we go c6. We see what happens. He takes. Again, when people take, you're not usually taking something else. You're reacting. So that was the last move. I'm going to take that. Okay, knight takes. Again, trades. We take. Trades we take. And oof, what a painful, what a painful fork. Bishop here. We have to um, get out of this. And this is actually a teachable moment for you guys. If you ever have the chance to take a knight or take a rook for a bishop, you always take the knight. Always take the knight. I've explained this before, but um, one of the most important things that I think I could say in, in a very short period of time is this. If you ever have a choice between taking something for free and making a trade of any kind, you almost always want to take the thing for free. In chess, it's better if you have something that your opponent doesn't have rather than you have something better than what the opponent has, if that makes sense. It's always better to have something they don't have than have something better than they have. So I would take like a free knight instead of a queen for a rook. I would always take a free knight instead of a queen for a rook. Because if I just have one extra knight for free, I can probably do more with that. I'm probably closer to winning than if I have like a queen for a rook. It doesn't always hold up, but I think it's good advice. Um, F3, our knight's being attacked. I'm going to go back here, still attack the center. Always is a strong word. I think always is a good way for people to operate when you're beginning in chess. It, it's nice to have absolutes when you're starting out. It's like, oh, I'm supposed to do this at this point, but not at this point? That's confusing. No, just always do it. It'll, it'll fail you sometimes, but most of the time it'll help. Okay, our bishop's being attacked, so we can't castle. Well, let's move my bishop to the center. That'll, that'll help me out. The rook's attacking the bishop, so I can't castle. Um, let's castle. Okay, it goes there. Now, we sort of talked about we'd be playing a6. Okay, our queen's attacked. Let's, uh, let's make a move to at least get, get a little bit more towards the center. Um, our bishop's uh, going to be gobbled here. Johnny Mexico, by the way. Oh, I was about to say he's, uh, he's really giving us the work, but... Johnny Mexico with a slip up there. 
And we're right back in it, boys. We're right back in it. Uh, let's play this move. Let's play h6. Okay. Work to open file in the center. We got our escape square. This is good. Uh, rook down. Okay, some random pawn moves time. Yeah, and also this one. I'm going to start pushing this pawn too. Um, okay, yeah. Push, push. Push, push, push. Okay, I'd like to keep pushing, but I can't really do that. Uh, here we go. This is a move towards the center. Also attacks two things. Okay, this is a recapture. Easy, easy. Johnny Mexico. That's very nice. Very nice. We got back in the game here. Oh, rook there. This looks like our, our patented uh, fork. This looks like our patented fork. Johnny Mexico is getting hit with a basic tactic. Oh no. Oh no for buddy. Sure. Free stuff for, for me? You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. Okay. Now that we have this position, I think the winning plan is just push the spawn. Basically, I want to push the spawn the entire way home. Let's see if I can do that. Push, push, push. Okay, how do I get this queen out of the way? Right, that's my next question. I can't push because the queen is basically sitting in front. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> now I can push. Now I can push. Yep. Here we go. You see, guys, when I, when I say push past pawns, look how easily it works. I mentioned this earlier. Push your pass pawn. People at this ELO, they don't stop you. They honestly don't. <laughs> check. Let's give him a check. Let's give him another check. Oh, it's checkmate. The knight is there. The knight is there watching uh, G4. The best ways to, to watch the, the show at the moment is always be thinking in the back of your head, what would I do here and see if it matches up with, with the move I'm, I'm going to. By the way, our opponent did play well. Definitely. Okay, knight there. We're going to go knight here. Because always, when this knight takes the central squares, we're going to match it. When that knight takes those central squares, we're going to match it. E3, you probably should have brought the bishop out. What are we going to do? Bishop c5. Just like, just like the position with white. It's the same thing. Okay, we want to maybe strengthen the center. Also castle in general. Okay, our bishop's getting attacked. Now, we've talked about what do we do when the bishop gets attacked. Don't worry, don't stress. Just grab that bishop and put it back here every time. If it's a pawn, it doesn't matter, knight, just bring it back. You might take it, that's okay, you'll take back. You'll take back with the pawn towards the center. Okay, he goes pawn up. I, I always think that at level 2, it's good to just strengthen that center. With this, before castling, it's always an option. Plus, I'm never going to play d5, so I know that I'm going to play d6. Okay, bishop g5. What do we do against this move? This should be automatic, just like you don't even have to think. Because every time you see that bishop move, you, you just play this. You close your eyes and that's what you do. h6. Always h6. Immediately. Just don't even think. Don't even think. Bishop goes back. Hey, look, this Sir Knight 209. He's playing a good move, you see? He's keeping the pin. He's keeping the pin. I like to see that. That's actually great by him. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to get our bishop out. We're going to get our bishop out. Okay, he brings his bishop there. We can castle. At level 1 in habits, you sort of want to castle ASAP. As you move to level 2, you can, you, know, you can play a few developing moves instead of castling. That's sort of your discretion. If you castled early in this game or later, it would have been good. It would have been a good move. Now, is bishop takes f6 good? Am I going to say, hey, sir knight 209, uh, uh, nice move. Nice move, bishop takes f6. No, I'm going to say, dude, that's a blunder. That's a terrible move. That's awful. I'm going to take, and look, I don't have this issue anymore. People love to take this knight and put this knight on d5. Like, they think they just won the game or something. It's like, dude, that's not the case at all. Let me finish development. Okay, let's bring the rook to the middle. Okay, knight there. Technically, it's not forking this pawn, but I still think that queen here is the good habit to do after you see this knight move. Just go back, and then we can develop it here, bring the rook to the middle. Nice and easy. Okay, castles. Like I just said, we're going to bring the queen up and get the rook over, right? We're just, uh, just finishing our development here. Okay, h3. What are we going to do with this one, guys? h3. What are we going to do with that? We're not going to take. We're going to go back. That's our habit. 
That's our habit. Night back, every time we see a trade, we take a trade, right? It's generally what we do. Not gonna think twice about it. Not gonna think twice about it. Take that trade, the queen takes back, and how are we gonna finish development? Maybe there's lots of moves you might be tempted by. Just trust me, finish development, and then we'll get to it. And then we'll get to it. Okay, now we're finished development. A knight into the middle of the board. Looks pretty good. This is, uh, this is an understandable move. Queen g3. Hey, what's our opponent planning? You know, I think our opponent is planning to do this. But you know what? Whether I see that or not, they're getting forked. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I see this or not, because I, I should see that fork. The most common square for there to be forks on is e2. Why e2? Because the king, when it castles, goes to g1. It castles kingside, you know, 80% of the time, and it's on g1. So always be very familiar with it. That e2 square, you can fork so many things on that square. I takes queen, of course. Okay, and already, I mean, we're basically winning here, right? Let's get some random pawn moves over here. This is obviously a nice one because it kicks things out. And that's a free piece. Look at that. Chess is so easy. Chess is so easy. I'm not doing anything too fancy here. And look at that. A dub. Nice dub for the boys. Hey, guys. Just a reminder that Building Habits is going to be a regular series on our YouTube channel. So make sure to get subscribed if you are not already. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm. And let me know what you thought about the video. See you next time.